the semifinals in the USFL 1985. Baltimore and Birmingham, the winner plays Oakland for the USFL title next Sunday night. We're at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama for this second semifinal game in the USFL playoffs. The weather is relatively mild, all things considered. Obviously a little warmer down on the field because of the artificial surface. The Stars and the Stallions and a ball game that offers the ticket to the championship game next Sunday night against the Oakland Invaders. In the first semifinal game played yesterday at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, the Oakland Invaders, the Western Conference champions, beat the Memphis Showboats 28-19. It was an impressive win for the Invaders at Memphis, and they're back home now waiting to see which team will qualify for the title game here. This is a matchup of the two best defenses in the USFL. The two previous games clearly reflect the quality of the defense on both sides. Look at that, 7-3 and 14-7 scores these days in professional football. And here's why. The, ball, the uh, Baltimore Stars allowed the fewest points per game uh, overall during the season, whereas Birmingham allowed the smallest amount of yardage to the opposition. And they're both impressive numbers as far as I'm concerned. In this ball game, I think, Lynn Swan, you don't talk about defense. As the morning paper in Birmingham said, you talk about defense. <laughs> you certainly do, and both teams played exceptionally well. They come together as a unit, and it's just a beautiful thing to watch when these two teams come out and play. The defensive line gives you a hard pass rush. Linebackers swarming all around the field, and the secondary always in the right spot to pick out the ball. The Birmingham Stallions lead the league in takeaways with a plus 17, and the Stars weren't far, far behind with plus 11. They have Chuck Clatton, who picked off 16 in the course of the year, and Mike Lush for the Stars picked off 10, so they're doing their share of the work. There are a couple of running backs in this ball game, Kelvin Bryant for the Stars and Joe Cribbs for the Stallions. I think either one of those fellows could emerge and have a big ball game and swing a decision. Both guys are going to have a tough way to go against the defenses they face today. Joe Cribbs cracked, or excuse me, bruised two ribs last week. There's going to be some question mark about what he will be able to do this afternoon. Kelvin Bryant was hurt during the course of the year, a bad ankle. He only ran the ball six times against Birmingham when they last played, but he's reaching a peak just when you want him the most in the playoffs. Well, no running back ever runs very far without some help from the big people in the trenches. The ringleader of the offensive front for the Baltimore Stars is offensive tackle Irv Eatman. Let's hear from Irv now as he talks with our Tim Brandt. All right, Keith, and Irv, you have heard the criticism personally because when this team needed key yardage, they always came behind you. There are some people that said, this has not been your year. Does that work as an incentive? Well, naturally, when you have a little adversity like we've had in the course of the year, naturally, we got to look for the somewhere to put the blame and since I'm one of our key players naturally uh, I should take some of that blame and I do but I, I feel like you know I've had a good year and I'm not really particularly concerned about it coaches and the players have been happy with and that's all I'm concerned about I'm going to ask you right up front is this the toughest defense you've faced all year I don't think it is I think they may be one of the best defenses statistically they are the best statistically but not the toughest because uh, they predicate their whole defense on fooling people but they're not going to fool us today all right, I'm going right across the field right now, and I'm going to talk to Mike Perko, who's going to be on the other line. Any message for him? Well, all they better do is strap it on, because uh, we came to play, and we're going to take this ball game today. All right, Keith. Thank you very much, Tim. You have to get pressure on any quarterback these days to survive, the way the game of football is played at all levels. But especially a guy like Chuck Vicina, you give him time to look over the field, he'll pick your pocket, and he'll beat you. And one of the guys charged with the problem of pursuing Fusina today, trying to contain him, trying to shorten his time of view, is Mike Perko, the mountain man now with Tim Brandt. All right, Mike, I was just over there with Irv Eatman. I'm going to tell you right up front, he said strap it on, and this is definitely not the toughest defense he's faced all year. We'll see after the game. Tell me about their offense now. It'll go after you. They've averaged 27 points the last five regular season games. How do you stop it? Uh, you got to stop everything, passing and running. Our teams are both evenly matched. It's going to come down to who makes the fewest mistakes. Are you pumped up? Hell yeah. All right, there it is. Keep the stage is set. Well, he's a fearsome-looking critter, isn't he? Big Mike Perko. This is a, a matchup that has always been fun. 
Now, we talk about the fact that Birmingham defeated Baltimore twice this year, 7-3 and 14-7. You can't forget that it was the Philadelphia Stars that took the Birmingham Stallions out of the playoffs last year up at Franklin Field. They just simply handled them 20-10. to 10. The toss of the coin now in the center of the field. The referee is Bill Parkinson. Birmingham Stallions will get the football first. Len Swan, what do you think about having the ball on the first possession? Now, throughout the playoffs, we have seen every game that we have covered, the opening possession for each side has been tentative and, and sometimes uh, mistake laden. It has been. I think it's better to have the ball on the opening possession, Keith. The offense can come out into the field. The offense always has to play under control. And I think that's one of the things that happens okay. at the start of the game. You're playing too much under to control. Under so why not have the offense out there taking their time, filling out the opposition, and then trying to get the momentum built up. The defense can go out there and just play open and loose with all that aggressiveness out into the ball game and really pin a team back if they can get the jump on them. Let's go. Quickly, the officials for the ball game, Bill Parkinson, referee, Tom Myers, umpire, Dale Newhouse, headlinesman, line judge is Lawrence Hill, back judge is Dick Eichhorst, Don Gassaway, the side judge, and the field judge is Wesley Ward. The Baltimore Stars will be wearing the red shirts and the Birmingham Stallions wearing the white shirts, home colors. Dave Trout is the place kicker. For the Birmingham, uh, for the Baltimore Stars and Birmingham's, uh, Danny Miller, of course, was the hero of the city throughout the course of the week after kicking five field goals last week. When they were warming up, Keith, before the game, he had a couple of warm-ups at 50 yards and everybody was applauding him. Nailed it. He's pumped up. Ball goes deep to McFadden. Bad McFadden at the 15, 20, and down at the 21 or 22 yard line. And this is the way that Birmingham opens the offensive. Afternoon for them. Cliff Stout at quarterback. Joe Cribbs and Joel Coles, the running back. Joey Jones and Jim Smith, the wide receivers. Daryl Mason, the tight end. Jim Smith probably we doubled most of the day. It's McKinley, Adelette, Battaglia, Sandin, Phoenix, the big people up front for the Stallions. And here we go with the first snap of the ball game. The winner goes to the title game. Ken Toler is in there at a wide spot now. They open with three wides, and the ball is handed to Joe Cribbs. And Cribbs has a yard, maybe two, as he is pinned down by the inside linebacker, Mike Johnson. The defensive alignment for the Baltimore Stars. The three big people up front are William Fuller. Pete Kugler is back from injury at just the right time. Don Fielder. The backers are Jamison, Johnson, Mills, and Cooper. The secondary is a good one of Sutton and Lane at the corners with Gibson and Lush the safeties. Second down and eight. And Cribs again, this time caught. Just as he receives the ball by Pete Kugler, the nose tackle who had three years with the San Francisco 49ers, came out of Penn State from his collegiate days. And the football is just short of the 25-yard line where it is third down and seven. the first pass of the afternoon by Cliff Stout. Straight back. Sideline pattern. Picked off. And it could be six. Jonathan Sutton. Touchdown. Stout did not look off anybody. He threw the ball to the first man he looked at. And Sutton was laying right there and just simply stepped in front of Smith and away he went. Keith, and trying to figure out what was going to happen in this ball game, talking with our producer before the game, I had said that build position and the least number of turnovers would probably dictate who would win this ball game. Cliff Stout just backs up. He's looking for Tola. Sutton read him all the way. As you said, he did not look off. The receiver stared right at him. And a good cornerback, when he's playing a zone, reads the eye. 
eyes of the quarterback and follows him directly to the ball. 36 yards on the interception and return for a touchdown. And Trout nails the extra point. The USFL's second all-time leading scorer at 353 now has 354. And so bang bang at the start of the ball game. it in for the TD on the interception and a 7-0 lead. It is a 7-0 Stars lead. And the offense is yet to come on the field as Trout gets ready to kick off. McFadden and Douglas are the deep people. One pass, one interception, one TD. That's the start of the game. And Trout again is high, high with it and long to the goal line for McFadden. And he's cut down as he gets to the 15-yard line. The special teams for the Baltimore Stars have been since the very beginning, three years ago, very good. And the, as you can see the ball being placed at the 15-yard line, why special teams plays an important role. You don't have to return the kickoff and you can bring it out to the 20. Good special teams can make a good hit, cause a fumble, pin you up inside that 20, and give your defense a chance to really stop the offense deep in their own territory. Shrug it off and start again. Pitch it outside the crib. Cribs cuts it back inside, gets two yards on the play. Don Fielder drifted out with the play. George Cooper was out there along with Dave Ofer. There wasn't any place for Cribs to go. Cribs throughout the 1985 season, Keith, has not really been able to, to get to the outside to break any big run. His longest run of the regular season was only 28 yard lines. Anytime a linebacker or cornerback can come up and force him back to the inside, you have a higher chance of him being tackled for a short game with all the pursuit coming from the inside out. At the beginning of this ball game, I'm reminded of the old Wallace Wade credo. Nobody ever wins a football game, somebody loses. <laughs> On second down, Stout looks down the middle, there is nobody. Now he's got Smith open and misses him was thrown a little high and in front of Smith he had broken away from the linebacker trying to cover him down the middle but then the crowd got bigger as Sutton Gibson Lush converged on him Smitty coming across the middle of the field coming open as the scout was trying to roll out Jimmy looked like he really didn't go out to that pass very hard Keith. he went up in the air he didn't go out for the pass uh, but he might have been expecting um, Antonio Gibson to lay one in his ribs about that time because Tony was close to it and he's a big man. That's true, but you still go after the ball. True. It's 7-0. Stars lead on Sutton's interception. Return of 33 yards and stop back to throw on third down. Fuller's out there pursuing. Fuller's got it. Mills came from the inside, but it was William Fuller, the big fella from North Carolina, who just stood him up, played him off, and took him down at the original line of scrimmage, and it's kicking time for Bob Parsons. So far, this game, early in the first period, all defense and all of it, the Baltimore Stars. Lane had a 91-yarder that got him off and winging against New Jersey last Monday night. Parsons, a very high kick and a very good punt for Bob. Back at the 43 for Lane. And he is brought down just short of midfield at the 49-yard line by Ted Walton, a defensive back. So Bob Parsons punting well late in the season. A 44-yarder and a six-yard return. The offensive alignment for Baltimore. First time on the field, despite the fact they're leading 7-0. Fusina at quarterback, Kelvin Brian, Allen Harvin, the setback. Spitsky, Caver, Wyatt, and Dunnick is the tight end. And it's first down stars at their own 49-yard line. With 11 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Fusina gives to Bryant. Bryant is caught behind the line of scrimmage, and he goes down at the 43. And it's Dave Purifoy, number 75. The offensive front for the Baltimore Stars is Conwell, Dugan, Oates, Comiskey, Eatman. And the defense for Birmingham is Purifoy, Klein, Smith, Perko out of a four-man front. The backers are Spencer, Rowe, and Kelly. And the secondary, Woodbury, Dumars, Clanton, and Evans. Loss on the play of six yards. It is second down and 16. Eugenia back to throw. No pressure, throws it underneath to Kelvin Bryant. And Bryant wheels and deals to the 35 and down to the 34. 
That is a typical pass by Chuck Ducina, the kind of pass he will try to throw all day long. He doesn't have the strongest arm in the world, so he goes for the high percentage passes, completing 61 of his passes on the regular season. Kelvin Bryant just swings out of the backfield. The ball only goes about 10 yards in the air. Then with some nifty running, he picks up the rest of the yards. And Willie Collier has come into the ball game for Baltimore. Coming off of a broken collarbone. You see now. Keeps the ball. He was looking to give it away, but he was looking for somebody to come through the hole on the left side, and nobody came. Or maybe he didn't have control of it. Whatever, he kept it and got a little bit out of it. Keith, I should mention, even though it's the Baltimore offense on the field, that that reception, interception, and return for a touchdown by Sutton was the first time one has been returned for a touchdown in USFL playoff history. Jim Mora, the coach of Baltimore. Raleigh Dodge, the head man of Birmingham. Two well-constructed organizations and two good football teams. You've seen it back to throw it. Going to the corner. Collier, touchdown. No, it is uh, Victor Harrison. Victor Harrison, the defender, fell down. David Evans, I believe it was, got tangled up and fell down. The play goes for 30 yards, and the Baltimore Stars have jumped out to a two-touchdown lead. Now it looked like David did not want to get called for pass interference, so he was pulling back as he was stumbling down. In that case, he should have just really jumped all over Victor Harrison, taking the interference call as opposed to giving up an easy touchdown. Victor Harrison was behind him. It was a very well-thrown pass. Had he stayed up, he would have had to have made a spectacular leap, Keith, to knock that ball down. Dave Trump knocks it through. Oh, David has added two more points to his career total. There's the young man that carried it in for the touchdown, Harrison. Only his fourth touchdown of the year. And here's another look at the play. Play action pass. Holding the linebackers. Allowing Chuck to see the more time to get the ball away. And the two quick touchdowns on the interception and now here the long pass by Piscina to Harrison have come on the backs of mistakes and poor plays by the Birmingham Stallions. If they continue this play, it's going to be a route. 9-17 to go in the first quarter and it's 14-0 start. Jim Mora, who's bidding to put his stars in the USFL title game for a third successive year. Lost the first time around, 24-22 to Michigan. Won handily over Arizona the second time around. And leading right now in the first quarter, 14-0 over Birmingham. It's a very poor kick by David Kraut. The ball is caught short up at the 21-yard line. He almost whiffed it. Victor Harrison scored the TD on the 30-yard pass. He's now with Tim Brent. All right, Keith, and the play happened right in front of me, and it looked like he tripped right on your heel. Could you feel him? Yes, I saw him. When I came to the line, I knew it was man-to-man -man coverage. He was playing bump. He was about two yards from the line of scrimmage on me. I knew if I could get by him, the play was caught from the sideline. I knew if Chuck led up, I would have a chance to get under it. When I went by him, I saw the trip on his foot, and I thought I was going to go down. I maintained the balance, and I saw the ball in the air. I was going to let it go. Instead, he went down, tripping on your foot. Cliff Stout rolls it out now on first down for Birmingham. Keeps the ball and turns it upfield to about the 29. And he takes a lick from 96, Don Fielder. Cliff Stout is accustomed to carrying the ball. Regular season, he carried 80 times for 437 yards, a 5.5 average for carrying five touchdowns and that was second on his team only to Joe Cripps. He needs two yards on second down. Paul Otka Ruth is in the lineup now. For Birmingham at the eye back. Ball goes to the up man. And that's Joel Coles, a 220 pounder out of Penn State and Joel has the first down for the stallion. So there is their first offensive success of the afternoon. Football, Keith, as you well know, is very much a game of the attitude as we take a look at Raleigh Dodge on the sideline, head coach of the Stallions. And being Eastern Conference champion, ch champions this year, you would expect Birmingham 
to come out and play well and have the edge in this ball game. On the other hand, Baltimore can come out and play loose. No one expects them to win. No one expects them to really be in the playoffs. On first down, Stout gets the pass away. He is hit hard as he delivers the pass, and it was George Cooper, an outside linebacker, that came in to nail him and went right through Joe Cribb's block. And I think that attitude, that looseness, Keith, is, is paying off for Baltimore early in this ball game. The defense picking off the pass, the offense coming back, scoring very quickly. You see there the pass rush. Joe Cribb's there just being flattened as Cooper came in. Excuse me, Joel Cole's being flattened as Cooper came in on that pass rush. They send Joey Jones and Jim Smith to the bottom of the picture now. It is second down and ten. From the 33. A little better protection this time. Now Scott pulls it down, and he's surrounded by red shirts, and he'll get one yard on the play. So it'll be third and nine. Sam Mills, number 54, number 91, Buddy Moore, making the stop. Cliff just didn't know where he wanted to run that time or whether he just wanted to stop and look downfield once again. Jim Smith, who led this team in receptions this season, 87 catches for a league-leading 20 touchdowns, was double-covered on that play, and we can expect to see Jimmy double-covered in most key passing situations. Third and nine. is the ball in front of Joey Jones. And again, there were people in his face. Number 67 was blowing right in on him. Pete Cooper, the nose tackle. And so far, it's been all Baltimore. You're going to see Chris Dowd have to go to Joey Jones and Toler and to his tight end more with Jim Smith getting lots of double coverage. The defensive secondary for Baltimore plays extremely well and tough defense. They're not going to make a lot of mistakes. Another fine punt by Bob Parsons. Runs Garcia Lane out of bounds. Just outside the 15-yard line, and that one by Big Bob was 51 yards with 6.33 to go in the first quarter, 14-0 start. From the 15-yard line, Baltimore goes to work. Bryant bounces outside and gets it out to the 22. We get a chance to compare Bryant and his running style to Joe Cribbs throughout the afternoon. And you'll notice that Bryant is such an instinctive runner. He's got long strides, real solid gait, and he just makes the quick moves to the inside. Never gives you too much of anything. Doesn't waste a lot of energy. Just seems to know where those holes are. He runs and fills the openings and what just follows it? his instinct. Well, fucking deep. Seven, second down, and three. Yusina looks over the field and throws underneath for Alan Harbin, and Harbin doesn't hold on. It'll be third down and three. That would have been enough for the first down, just barely. Number 55, Herb Spencer was the man who came over and hit Harbin as he was fumbling with the football. Spencer loves contact, loves to make the big hit. Right here, had he just looked up, waited a little bit longer, he might have been able to just take this bobble and run into the end zone with it as it bounced right in front of his head here. Third and three. It's a long three. <laughs> Throwing. Underneath. Pass is caught by James Caber out of Missouri. And he's pulled down at the 32-yard line and it's a first down. One of the things that is going to allow the Stars to have success is that their routes are not very deep. Get them away very quickly. The offensive line doing an excellent job of protecting under those circumstances. They just make a little wall in front of Chuck Fusina. No one can get through. 14-0. Stars jumping out to a big lead in the first. And that's a big lead between these two teams. couple of yards up near the 34. Once again, however, we see that Kelvin Bryant makes a couple of big plays. He's out of the lineup. He rests to play, and then he comes back. 
Now, Kelvin Bryant never seen, never seen this year to ever be in top shape. He has been doing that consistently, game after game after game, so you have to question well, what his physical status is. Wide split in the back now on second down and eight. Ryan going out on the wing has the ball. And he's short of the first down as he gets to the 39 where three Stallions bring him down. And we got a Baltimore man picking up on the field. Ken Dunnett, the tight end out of Memphis State. So with 4.06, timeout for the injured man. First quarter of play, Stars, two touchdown lead. Dunnick off the field, walked off. That is wind knock. Looked like it took a helmet in the stomach and just knocked the wind out of it. Big tough guy. He'll be back. Steve Folsom, who was the starting tight end for the Stars the first two seasons, is now in there. He lost the job to Dunnick, the starting job at least, when he was injured. And Folsom is only recently back. You see the back to throw on third down and three. He goes high and deep and long. Too long. As intended for Willie Collier. And Willie's out there playing with a just recently healed uh, collarbone. I talked to him before the game. He's got a pad on his feet. He says, yeah, I don't know how much I can play, but as soon as I get hit, I'll find out just how well I am. He's open on the play, but because of the blitz and Herb Spencer knocking Chuck Fusina down, he really had to unload quickly. Thus, he cannot throw it with a great deal of accuracy. Are you a little surprised the Baltimore receivers are getting that loose? In the Birmingham Very Center? surprised. Here's the punt. Sean Landetta, and Sean hangs it very, very high, forcing Thad McFadden to call a fair catch. And Landetta, who is one of the better punters in football today, didn't get the kind of distance we're used to seeing from him. So the U.S. Women's Open coming up next Saturday here on ABC. This is a swing pass to Joe Cripp. And Joe gets it out to about the 31 at the pickup of four yards. And the Baltimore defensive people are all over the place. Joe, Sam Mills, who came storming back into pro football after being refused an opportunity in the NFL, made uh, that play, 5'9", 225. Everybody seemed to say when Sam was trying to get a place to play, you're too small, you're too short. But all he's done with the Baltimore Stars and previously the Philadelphia Stars is be an all-star three straight years. Second down and six. <laughs> this is Joel Cole. Down at the 30. Cole's tripping up over in Number 35. on the Astro turf on his own feet. Could not get to the outside. Someone else from the Baltimore team on defense is now down in the field. We'll take a look. 35 Coles. He wants to cut inside. Can't make. It's not off this foot. It's off uh, George Cooper is the man down. I was saying that Coles fell down by tripping over one of his linemen who was out in front of him. Walking. Birmingham, looking back into history between these two teams, never scored more than 14 points against the Stars. They lost in the playoffs last year at Philadelphia, 20 to 10. And uh, to just refresh your memory, the two previous games this year, 7-3 Birmingham up at College Park and 14-7 here at Legion Field. Looks like Cooper's either got knee or ankle trouble. Recalling that playoff game of last year, Keith, I recall that Birmingham just did not play a good football game all the way around. It's like they came, they came into the ball game to put the uniforms on, but they really didn't want to play the game. Well, that comes from tightness, I guess, anticipation. It comes from a thousand different little things that all add up into a big thing when it's all done. Yeah, but this is a semifinal game. Last year was a semifinal game, a championship game. When you go after it, it's not the best record that's going to take you on. It's winning today. Right. No second chances in the playoff games. It's third down and seven now for the Stallion from the 30. <laughs> Stout has time this time, but the play is broken up. The pass intended for Ken Toller, 
And the man that made the play was Jonathan Sutton, the left corner. It was Sutton who made the interception when Stout threw his first pass in the first possession. Parsons' third punt. The previous two were 44 and 51. Pressure this time. Still gets it out and gets a good punt out of it. And Garcia Lane can't get to it as it takes a Baltimore bounce back up the field. It's going to be up somewhere in the neighborhood of the 40. Now the ball will come back to the 40 where one of the Birmingham players touched it as it bounced back. 34, Jeff Rodenberg was a man who jumped on top of it. First down. The ball is at the 40 and Kelvin Bryant Outside, as a receiver, instead the ball is thrown underneath to Dunnick, the tight end. And Dunnick takes it over onto the Birmingham side of the field at the 41, and it begins to appear that Baltimore is able to move the ball almost at will. Baltimore coming out playing a very, well, not very wide open, but much more open, a football game that I think we're accustomed to seeing from their offense. It is Chuck Clanton hurt on the play. That's the man that intercepted 16 passes for the Birmingham defense. During the course of a season, he's a wild man in the secondary, the free safety who plays center field and just goes flying all over the ballpark. And that time, he took a lick and hasn't gotten up yet. Yusina has completed five passes so far to four different receivers. Well, he's, he has to be able to spread the ball out. He's reading the defensive coverages, Keith, and he is only taking what the defense is going to give him. He doesn't throw into double coverage very often. He looks for what the defense will give you, the single coverage on the receiver. He doesn't always try and take the big chunk. He goes after the high percentage passes. And that's why Chuck Cusina is always on a winning football team. He may not be able to, to take the game apart by throwing passes 50 and 60 yards downfield all the time, but he doesn't hurt you. He doesn't make the mistakes that can cost you a football game. Clanton gets up. Runs off. And here comes Kelvin Bryant on a sweep. And he's going to have a first down for the Stars inside the Birmingham 30-yard line. Right at the 30 is where they put him down. This is that Eatman Comiskey bunch on the right side. Now they get out in front of him and that's a lot of blocking power there. And you see how they're just throwing people back, pushing him downfield. And Kelvin Bryant just weaves in and out between the melee. Somewhat of a homecoming for Irv Eatman. Back in 1961 on January 1st, he was born here in Birmingham, Alabama. First down stars, 30 of Birmingham, and this time there is nothing there. That was Mike oh, Kelly, Kelvin Bryant. They came in there and really stuck his headgear into the back of Bryant, Ron Padgett. It's on the bottom, holding him down. I'm about gone in the first quarter of play. We're at 20 seconds to go. Quite a mild day for the game. Oakland defeated Memphis 28-19 uh, yesterday to become one of the championship contenders. The winner of this one will be on their way to Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands for next Sunday night's game, which you'll see on ABC at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. The first quarter is over. So after 15 minutes, it's a 14-point lead for the Baltimore Stars, and frankly, that is surprising. The first quarter stats are certainly as definitive as the score, aren't they? They certainly are. That minus two yards for Birmingham comes on a four-yard completion and a minus six-yard sack. Look at the number of yards passing for Baltimore, 104 already in the first quarter. They're averaging 194 in a game, per game on the season. From the 30, Bucina gives it to Kelvin Bryant, and he's loose in the secondary and bangs his way across the 18. That will be another first down for the Stars. Chuck Clanton back in the ball game after having his bell rung, making the tackle. Clanton 
Martin is fearless. He goes and sticks his head in there against some big people sometimes that he perhaps ought not to. But Chuck weighs 193 pounds and is fearless. Yeah, he is fearless. He picks the balls off by disguising his coverage. And very often you'll see one of those big backs being hit by someone else or being held. And Chuck Patton takes that opportunity to really nail him once again. The patented sweep Thank by Kelvin Bryant. And Bryant is going to get a good six yards out of this one. are a team with a lot of character and a lot of pride and I think one of their motivating forces to come back and make it to the playoffs and be here in the semifinal game is the fact that people had them written off early in the season. I certainly did. I thought they were playing very poorly but there would be no way they'd make it to the playoff game. Matter of fact, I picked them to lose against New Jersey and several of the players reminded me before the game that I was wrong. Second down and four, Fusina throwing. Gets his pass off, the pass is incomplete. Donick had one hand on it, and then David Dumars banged into him, and the ball fell away. And they got Fusina down that time. Not, it was not a hard lick, but at least they got him down for the first time. And you like to get Chuck thinking about the pressure, feeling the pressure every time he throws the ball. He is not going to lose his poise, however, easily or very quickly. We've seen him in ball games where the team has gotten down. There's pushed out in the sideline, waiting for an opportunity to get back in and get things turned around for Birmingham. But Tucina has been down before and fought back, so it's pushed out. So I don't think it's been a situation where either one of them is going to panic or get frustrated. And as Chuck Tucina is wont to do many times, when he comes up there and he's looking at opportunity to put points on the scoreboard and there is something wrong, he does not hesitate about spending a timeout. Dodge, whose Birmingham Stallions are beleaguered at the moment, trailing 14 nothing, and the Stars with a third down and four at the 12-yard line of Birmingham. Easily within field goal range if they fail to pick up the four and a half yards they need. Herb Eaton out of UCLA. First round draft choice has played in every down of the offensive team for all three seasons here for the Baltimore Stars. David Riley, the lone remaining back. Flips is on. They pick it off. And the pass is incomplete. Number 54 diving in was Dallas Hickman. Chuck Clanton was with him. And they took James Caver out of the play. Yeah, James Caver, Caver better check his hands to find out where the hole is. <laughs> he ought to hang on to this one. Because Hickman was coming, he should have made that catch. He and Clatton just unloaded. That went right by the umpire's ear. That might have also had something to do with his vision. In is David Trout. University of Pittsburgh played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. 29-yard try. Tim Reardon will hold it. Joe Happy snaps it. And Trout nails it. But slides it right. He did not hook back for it. He missed the field goal last week at New Jersey. And now he has missed the field goal try of only 29 yards early in the second quarter. So for a change, the Birmingham Stallions can take a deep breath and send the offense onto the field. Well, the Stallion defense held him out of the end zone and Trout missed the field goal try from 29 yards. And now the offense is out there at the 20 with 13 minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first half, fairly 14 to nothing. Stout <laughs> rolls it out. A lot of time, but nobody to throw to. Coles and Toller were down the right sideline. And we've got a penalty flag. We've got a personal foul. Cliff Stout with a little too much enthusiasm. And Cliff Stout is just standing there, not too far from where he was tackled. We'll take another look. He's rolling out. He's rolling out to try and put more pressure on the defense, trying to open something up. The receivers are covered, decide to run downfield, but the linebackers haven't taken that deep a drop. They're right there. Foul. Spearing 94, first down. That's Dave Ofar as Cliff Stout was being tackled. 
He just came diving over the top. I don't know. That's a bit questionable, Keith. Didn't seem really do much damage. You see him going over the top? Well, he tried. If he kept his head up, it'd have been all right. But if you yep. stick that helmet down, they're going to nail you for it. Whether you make contact or not. That's right. It has to do with a matter of intent. Looks like Cliff got a bloody nose, huh? Yeah. That'll mess up the uniform in a hurry. On a day like today, a bloody nose may seem like something very small and not serious, but you fog up, fog up those nasal passages, and it's, it becomes very difficult to breathe. And he has to yell. <laughs> First down, up at the 40. That one, Jim Smith goes high in front of Garcia Lane to make the catch. And for the first time today, the stadiums are on Baltimore's side of the field. Well, that pass looked like it was about 21 yards, Keith, a pass playing reception. And it takes time to be able to get downfield as Jim Smith runs downfield, pushes the secondary back, stops, and in the open zone, waits for the ball, and comes up, makes the catch. But when you have to wait that long for your receivers to come open, you're giving the defensive line a lot of time to put pressure on the passer. Just short of the 38 of Baltimore, first down Stallion. And Griff. Now, Joe hasn't found any daylight today. He ran into Sam Mills. Give him two on the play, make it second down and eight. Joe has carried the ball four times in the ball game, and each time he has gained two yards. Tough defense. Baltimore starts. Pete Kugler being back, holding down the middle. It's a big influence on this team, number 67. Ball out to Ruth now, replaces Cripps. Stop throwing. Has Smith open. Oh, did he take a wallop from 27, Mike Lush, but he holds on to the ball. And gets up. There is no holiday coming across the middle of anybody's football field. Mike Lush has made a living at the safety position. Dropping back in the middle, reading the passer, coming in, making the big plays, and the receiver's coming across. He's beating Sutton, Sutton across the middle here, but Lush just waits for him and unloads. But that's a second catch for Jim Smith for 42 yards. Ball is just inside the 17 of Baltimore. <laughs> and stop throwing again. Let pressure's on, gets it off, dumped it. And a penalty flag. We may get another call against Mike Johnson and or George Jameson for roughing Stout. Well, Stout is down on the field, slow to get up. And the referee whipped that drag out of his pocket in a hurry when two of them Intentional hit him. Intentional grounding? No, it's all grounding. Lost it down. Second down. I thought again they put Stout down with unusual vigor, and the call might go that way, but it's not. They call him for dumping it. They call him for dumping it. Let's see if there's anybody in the area. You see the pressure right here. He gets the ball away. He looks like he's dumping it off with Joe Cribbs, I think that was, who was lying down on the ground, was in the area. It wasn't Cribbs, because he's out getting his helmet fixed. It must have been Cole. Cole? Yeah. Bad break. Last week's game. He saw Jameson jump up and start bouncing up and down, and uh, Daryl Mason. Oh, oh, 35, 35 Joel Cole. Cole. It's a 20-yard penalty. <laughs> and back goes Stout the throw. Throws underneath to Joey Jones, and he's wrapped up at about the 32, 33-yard line. I've seen Joey Jones do what he just did there, Keith, a lot. He'll make the catch turn around he'll see a lot of people around him he'll give ground trying to use his speed to get away and he'll end up losing maybe a yard or two yards on the play you can make that move every once in a while but you can't live by it they need about 25 yards on third down 
Joker is back in the ball game. So far as ribs seem to be holding up. Kohler <laughs> makes the catch and then rolls down at the 25, well short of the original line of scrimmage. And in comes the kicking team, Danny Miller, who had five last Saturday to beat Houston. Miller has been deadly in postseason play during his career. He's 11 out of 11 in field goal. This is a 43-yarder to come out of the hold of Bob Lane off the snap of Joe Bach. Looks left. Hits the left upright. Well, we've seen Dave Trout get that treatment, haven't we? I was about to say, we've seen games where Dave Trout must have kicked three of them, or maybe four, and all the times we watched him kick, they hit the upright and bounce off. Danny Miller gets enough foot into it, it's long enough, it just drifts off to the left, hits the upright, very much like Tony Fritz's kick, that drifted off to the left, and final seconds of the ball game that lost it for Houston. 8.33 to go in the first half of play. Danny Miller has his string broken in a playoff play in his career. From 43 yards, hitting the upright. And the ball goes over to the Stars at their own 25. Eugene throwing to the sideline. And the ball is knocked away and a penalty flag is down. All going against Dennis Woodbury. The pass was intended for Scott Pitsky. Now Woodbury did what many people in the second one remember. Holding defense number 21. That's five yards and a first down. What many people in the secondary will do, going in, trying to knock a pass down, they're reaching over with the hand, the slap of the way, and the hand that's behind him on the inside, he used to hold on right there around the waist of the receiver. Unfortunately, there's a judge behind him to so throw a flag. You see right there the holding. That seventh man makes that play hard to get away with anymore, doesn't it? You bet it, Dan. Seventh pitcher. First down. Ball comes out just past the 30. Look out! Bryant's there! And it's touchdown star! A 70-yard pass run play to you see that a Kelvin Bryant. And Bill Rowe had no chance to catch Kelvin Bryant. The easy and it's part. getting serious now for the Birmingham Stallion. You're right. The easy part of this play is for Kelvin Bryant to run the pattern. The tough part was on Chuck Fusina as he steps away from pressure. He is almost sacked right there. He's almost sacked. He steps up into the pocket, lets it fly. It's a perfect pass over the shoulder. Nice, soft pass for Kelvin Bryant. And the North Carolina Tar Heel just runs it easily into the end zone. And Trout comes in trying to make it a 21 to nothing Baltimore Stars lead. Baltimore has no trouble playing on the road. They've done it all year. They live and work in Philadelphia and get on a bus and travel down the road for home games at College Park. So coming to Birmingham is no big deal for them. Bryant now, 32 yards running, 98 yards receiving. He's totaled 130 yards in the ball game, and here's another look at the TD. And right here, he looks like he's in good shape. He just takes an outside release. Bill Rowe has no chance, man-to-man -man coverage. He never even came close to being with Kelvin Bryant on the play. So at seven minutes and 37 seconds to play in the first half, it's a how do you do? 21-0 start. Dave Trott will kick off. Number 80 is Dad McFadden is the principal return man. Larry Douglas, the other man back there with him. This is a high, deep kickoff. A yard deep in the end zone to McFadden. Gets it outside. Mark McKent pursues him to the sidelines, and finally he is brought down at about the 28-yard line by Bill Hardy, number 21. Chuck Busina now with Tim Brandt. Having a big day. Yeah, 
Johnny was saying that you made the play, stepping up away from the blitz and avoiding a sack, but you're giving credit elsewhere. Well, I'm giving credit to our quarterback coach. I think Carl Smith come up with a good game plan today. We knew they'd be playing a lot of man, and Kelvin's our fastest player, so he said, hey, get it out to Kelvin, and I just had to step up in a pocket and get it to him. Couldn't have figured it was going to be this easy, though. It's not that easy. Let me tell you, they're a great team, and we're going to have to play awfully hard to win this football game. All right, Keith. Tough old competitor, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> That pass play was the longest in Stars history, 70 yards to Kelvin Bryant. Now it's time to push it out and see show some of this character and get this team back on the Joey board. Jones is available, and he's got the ball at the 46. But once again, the Birmingham receiver is nailed on the tackle. And Garcia Lane hit him. And there's a very simple reason, Keith. What the secondary is doing is giving them a lot of room in front. They're not allowing the receivers to come up and pressure them when they make the break right there. Now the defensive back is driving, and right there, he times it out to make the hit. Every receiver, as long as they play it that way, is going to take a lot of punishment in this ballgame this afternoon. From the 46, Scott throws again. Gets it off, and the pass is caught just over midfield at the Baltimore 49-yard line. And the man is Jim Smith. former Pittsburgh Steelers out here today, Keith. Raleigh Dodge, Cliff Stout, Jim Smith, David Trout on the other side, Willie Collier, Ron Colder. Yeah. 6-10 to go in the first half. his head down and into Scott Werner, a nickelback out of the University of Georgia, and he's got another Birmingham first down at the Baltimore 32. Yeah, Warner was a starter into the acquisition of Jonathan Sutton. Sutton came on to be a starter cornerback, and he moved Antonio Gibson inside, but he comes in those passing situations. Joe Cribbs not afraid to take anybody on. Drops his head, stays low. Gives Scott Warner a little shot. Daryl Mason on a comeback good at the 14 yard line. You give credit to the secondary of the Phillips of the Baltimore Stars. They played it tight, very close, but the offensive line for Birmingham does a great job. The Stout has all kinds of time. Daryl Mason breaking his route, running right back to the passer. The receivers are taught this constantly. Come back to the ball to the quarterback when you're in when he's in trouble well he's That's covered Mason has good foot speed he's covered by Mike Johnson who is the fastest of the linebackers for the stars and he just simply came back and got away from him first down Birmingham 14 yard line and stop still throwing pursuits on loops it off sets up a screen Cribs has got it tripped up number 56 George Cooper saved the touchdown oh he sure did he sure did that's a play that comes from the booth upstairs, Keith. You look at all the pursuit that first out gets when he rolls out, and the coach calls it down and says, run that screen. Take the roll out, throw the screen back to the other side. But here comes Cooper, right on the heels of Joe Cribbs as he's about to cut. He goes down, and Mike Lust jumps on top of him for insurance. Ball is marked at the nine. They've got to go to the four to get a first down. It's second and five. Stout started out one for six. But since then, he's run it up to nine out of ten. Throwing again. Joey Jones, and uh, Jones goes inside. Stout throws outside. And when they do that, it don't work. Yeah, it's real dangerous. Because Stout feeling that pressure. That one is picked off by the corner key. He might be on his way to the touchdown. To run. It yeah, it's a touchdown, and after that, it's just a marathon because he can keep running, and nobody's going to catch up right. to him. They're going to call a timeout here. Birmingham is stopping the clock at four minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half. There's some confusion, as apparently as to what kind of a play they wanted. Raleigh Dodge indicating to Joey Jones, who is coming.
coming off the field that uh, he wanted something different. So they will talk about it. And the Stallions now will have uh, one timeout remaining. Do you get the sense, uh, Swanee, that Birmingham is beginning to turn things just a little bit? They're starting to bring things back, getting more protection from their offensive line, finding the receivers downfield. But you also have to feel, that you also have to realize that Baltimore is giving that to them. They're giving them the short, the, the passes, uh, not too deep, just uh, short passes, preferring to unload on the receivers. They haven't been doing a lot of the blitzing that they're known for, especially deep in their own territory. One of these days he'll grow up a little bit taller and he can look over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be a war eagle or a fighter or something like that in this part of the country. It is two timeouts remaining, two, because they were not assessed a timeout earlier. They was ruled as an injured player. Yeah. Third down and five. <laughs> now throws for Joe Cribbs, and he can't pull it down. And there's a heady play by George Cooper, the outside linebacker. Cooper read that play as being Cribbs all the way the minute he looked at the quarterback, and he just ran right out there with Joe. Yeah, he, he did a very good job of covering it. And I don't know, it's, this is a real tough pass to throw. Cooper coming over, cutting off the throwing lane. That ball has to go right over the head of Joe Cribbs, and he's trying to turn his whole body around to see the ball to make the catch. Very, very difficult, even though it's a short pass. On fourth down, they're going. They're down 21 to nothing. They want the touchdown before half. Might be a blitz on. There is. He gets it away for Jones, who lays out and can't reach it, and Stout is laid out by number 58, George Jameson. Kugler was coming up the middle, but it was Jameson that leveled him, and so the Stallions come away empty. They brought everybody. You see the shot from our end zone camera. You see Mills coming up the center, all the pressure. Kugler on the inside, pressure on the outside. Joey Jones is open, but because of the pressure, pressure pushed out, cannot set his feet to throw the football. You see, he's constantly backing up. Never has a chance to slow down, to plant those feet, and throw from his, with his using his legs. It's all arms. It's just a little bit too far for Joey Jones. And so the Stars take over at their own nine, with four minutes and ten seconds to play in the first half. Winner goes to the title game on tonight in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Kelvin Bryant sliding along the line looking for something to open up. And it doesn't. He gets a yard. Number 44, Kelvin Bryant on the carry. A two-yard pickup. Oakland, Baltimore, as you said yesterday, if it works out that way, will be as close to a rematch as you could get from the original game between Michigan and Philadelphia. Well, the Dots not wanting to see that happen. Ain't over till it's over. That's right. Defense needs to come up with a big play to get his team back into this ball game. This is Alan Harbin. And Alan gets it up to about the 18 before he's taken back. Birmingham team to realize that this is they're behind by 21 points. They've got a long way to go to get back in this ball game or to possibly get on top of this ball game. But Raleigh Dutch knows he can't panic. He can't afford to make too many drastic changes in his game plan at this point. He still has time to bring his team along carefully and back into this ball game. But they have to come up with a big play. On third and a yard. They power it up the middle. Get the first down. Harvin, who is about 5'9", Allen just sort of disappears when he sticks his head in that bunch of big horses in front of him, and uh, he's tough to handle over a one or a two-yard span. Yeah, he's a small small man in, in height, but when he hurt both his knees while playing at Cincinnati and for a while was running around campus in a wheelchair or on crutches, both legs being bandaged up and then cast, 
to rehabilitate. He did a lot of weight work, got a lot stronger. And so at 5'9", he's 205 pounds. Uh, walking away to the sidelines as we hit the two-minute mark. Two minutes to go in the first half of play. And right now, the Baltimore Stars are very much in control. Two-minute warning. Get ready, New York, for the first title game to come your way in 20 years. The championship of the USFL. Sunday, July 14th, the United States Football League will crown its champion beginning at 8 p.m. at the Meadowlands. This is your chance to see football at its best. Tickets are available at the Meadowlands box office and all Ticketron outlets. The preceding message was furnished by the United States Football League. Kelvin Bryant with a wet towel on his head resting on the sidelines. I still question, as you do, uh, just how physically sound he is. Well, you know, if they keep playing like, like this, you won't have to be in great shape to play the whole game. They've only run 21 plays, 10 pickups, and 11 runs. Here comes Harmon up the middle. Alan Harmon, big run, and gets it out of the 37-yard line before he is finally dragged down. And right now, the Baltimore offensive front is whipping out of the Birmingham's defensive people. And it's taking it to him soundly. Riley's going to have to really assess what his team has done in the first half while he's in there at halftime make some adjustments and get his team motivated to come back up here and make up this deficit. This is Gary Worthy carrying the ball. And Worthy doesn't get much out of it. Let's go to Tim Brandt. Keith, the main problem down here for Kelvin has been the heat. Right now, he's extremely dizzy. He came off the field. They packed his wrists in ice. They put ice on his head. He's been, been fed a lot of liquids right now. He's putting his sweatbands back on. He says he feels better. He's going to try to get back in the ballgame. But he felt dizzy, and it has been the heat. This has been the pattern all year. Yes, it has been. I mean, the heat affects everyone. And you know, when you know you're coming into a hot weather game, you load up on the sodium, potassium, make sure that when you start to perspire and sweat out there, uh, you've got an ample supply of those minerals that you lose in those situations to keep you going. Birmingham, having spent the time out, and they have one remaining, we'll have some highlights from yesterday's Oakland-Memphis game, and we'll visit with Birmingham quarterback Cliff Stout. Since uh, the word Baltimore is a little misleading in this whole star situation because they live in Philadelphia, they play in College Park, and the support at College Park, frankly, has not been very good. No, it hasn't. Just tough, I think, for Baltimore fans to get excited not knowing if this team is really a Baltimore team or a Philadelphia team. They just don't feel like it's a home team. Brian is back in the lineup now. Did he get feel like Chuck might have had trouble handling it that time? Ron Padgett was there about the time the ball was there. Had a two-yard loss. Shooting through the gap there, but you seem able to hang on to the ball. And things brings up a big play situation now for the defense for Birmingham. Third down, a lot of yards to go to pick up a first. And you got a timeout call. This is called by the Stallions, so that will leave them with none. Trying to conserve as much time as possible. 127, if they hold them here, and it's going to be third down and about 15, then uh, they'll force the punt and have a little time left to try to get something out of it. Raleigh uh, disdained the field goal a few minutes ago, trying to go for the touchdown, and well, I think that's it's a blatant example of having to have to change his game plan, you know, take more chances to get his team back into this game. Bryant is slowed down behind the line of scrimmage, but gets away and runs the ball up across the 40. That was Bill Rowe, number 52, who had a chance to make the number tackle. 44, 
back at the 30-yard line. Couldn't really hang on to him. 6'3", 235. Good size middle linebacker, good speed, but he just didn't have the arm strength to hang on to Kelvin. Landetta comes in now to punt the ball. His first one was a 34-yarder. It's less than a minute to play. The clock running at 55 seconds. That McFadden is deep for Birmingham. Six-yard punt by Landetta after he had to jump up in the air to catch the ball. Now with 27 seconds, Birmingham gets the ball with no time. And you know that Baltimore will go into their deep center field secondary. I'm looking out there, number 25, Scott Warner. He's coming off the field. Who do they have down there? Mike Lush will be playing center field. Yeah, they, they still have the regular defense in, but they're going to get back. Probably play a two-deep zone with five people coming short underneath. That's exactly what they've got. Scott goes long with it for Joey Jones, and he's got it. And Jones is out of bounds, killing the clock down at the 22-yard line of Baltimore and 19 seconds to play. Excellent pass into the seams of the open area by Chris Stout. Jim Moore can't believe the defense gave that one up. Little Joy Jones out of Alabama, the University of Alabama, comes up with an exceptional catch here on the sideline. He makes it 47 yards of the play, wisely fakes inside, and goes out of bounds to st stop the clock with 19 seconds left to play here in the first half. Ball is just short of the 22-yard line. Smith and Jones are the wide people. Holes is the blocking back. Smith, but Scott now has to run for his life. Throws it. Toller grabs it and tumbles out of bounds again, killing the clock at the seven-yard line of Baltimore and ten seconds to play. Heads up play there by Chris Stout. Chris Stout had room to run. But what he does is just head towards the other bounds, holds back. Look at Smith. Runs. But Jim Smith, wide open, coming across the center here. Open briefly in the seams of that zone defense. About the time he broke open, though, Cliff uh, Scott was running his life. <laughs> <laughs> First and goal at the seven with 10 seconds. <laughs> got to be looking Smith. He throws it for Smith. And it's too high, and it's got to be a penalty on it, I would think. Because uh, Jimmy was just rattled all over the place by Antonio Gibson. It looked like Gibson, Gibson was trying to climb his back like he climb a ladder. Jim Smith heading for the corner. That'll be half the distance, but the more important thing as far as Birmingham is concerned, now only four seconds remain. That's right. So you take a look. Number 23 is Antonio Gibson. He just reaches out and tries Passing to grab first, Smitty. 23 on the defense. Half the distance. First down. And in the eyes of the official, that was a catchable pass by Jim Smith. If that ball was not a catchable pass, then the pass interference would not be called. The official would wave off the flag. And I think Jim Moore might be yelling to that effect over there on the sideline. Well, it's, it's rude holding on Gibson, which is half the distance. Oh, that puts the ball down near the three. That's one of the tough calls to make as an official. You have to try and decide whether or not that receiver can really get to that pass. And in Jim Smith's case, I think they're giving him the benefit of the doubt because of his talent. They got one play. They score. No good. Everybody in town knew what play they were going to try to make, and Scott Werner stepped in front of Jim Smith and knocked the ball away. That was a play that was executed because you do your homework. We have seen Jim Smith run that play time and time again throughout the season. And he has been successful running them for touchdowns, but that time, Scott Warner, after seeing it on film, just out staring Jim Smith down again, just waits. Smitty wasn't coming back to the ball there. He's waiting on the pass. Scott Warner takes advantage of it by cutting across and making the play. 
give you another idea of the frustration of Birmingham. Cliff Stout threw for 180 yards in the second quarter and no points. A long first half for the Stallions this afternoon. And at halftime, the Baltimore Stars, 21, the Birmingham Stallions, nothing. We'll be back with the halftime activities after this message. Cliff Stout was bloodied in the first half. He's still wearing the same shirt to remind him of the punishment he's taken. He wants to give some himself here in the second half, but he'll have to wait a while because Birmingham will kick to Baltimore with the Stars leading 21 nothing, and Miller hits it high, and the ball hangs for Gary Worthy at the one-yard line. Worthy out to the 25, brought down by Walton and Robin Earl. Chuck Fusina and company come trotting on the field, and here are your halftime stats. Everything is pretty darn even except for that score. Birmingham actually has possessed the ball longer, just over three minutes. Crucial turnover in the ball game resulted in a touchdown for the Baltimore Star. And when you talk about turnovers, those are great opportunities. And yesterday's ball game, it was the Memphis Showboats that couldn't take advantage of theirs. But Baltimore just jumped all on top of that pass for the touchdown. Scott Fitzke, who was the leading receiver during the course of the season for the Stars with 73 receptions, saw the ball one time in the first half. Birmingham's really working on him. Fusina throws on first down and goes big. And it is incomplete and a penalty flag back at the line of screen. I thought it might be picked off for a moment. Chuck Clanton, number 24. Holding. Offense, number 50. First down. Center. Oates. Yep. Bart Oates. You heard uh, Chuck Fusina tell Tim Brandt in the ball game that Kelvin Bryant's the fastest guy. Right here, he just threw the ball up there, was hoping that Kelvin could get under it, but Chuck Clanton had a better chance. Kelvin tipped it. Chuck Clanton couldn't find the handle on it, and... Birmingham accepts the penalty and moves them back. It's now first down and 20. The ball coming back to the 15-yard line. Just starting the third quarter of play. And Birmingham's mountain is pretty high. 21-0 star. They can get some big plays out of their defense and fill position. They can turn it around very quickly. But it is a tough task. Made some mistakes by the Stars. They haven't made any so far. And there's a solid defensive play right there. Big Doug Smith. Presence is felt really for the first time this afternoon. Smith, a 300 pounder from Auburn, and he stepped in there and took a handle on Alan Harbin with a good deal of authority. They now put in the nickelback alignment for the Birmingham defense. The ball is out near the 16. It is third down and 19. Or excuse me, second down and 19. using his tight end to shuttle plays in and out. Three wide. Penalty flag. Run out of time. Five more yards. On the offense. Two second down. And backs him up one more time. So a few breaks. Here's a remarkable step amongst the trivia. The Stars have never scored in the third quarter in a playoff game. And that's particularly astounding because I had to go back and look. I didn't believe it when I first saw it. That remarkable game with Chicago. Remember the first year? They were down so much and came back to win in overtime. Yes, they did. But it's true. You see that throwing it? Pitsky's out there and he's got it. Cradles it in for a first down. My goodness, he turned Dennis Woodbury around, and Fusina's pass was as light as a sparrow's feather on a spring morning. And Scott, Scott Bitsky is not that fast a receiver. He's a controlled runner, runs precise routes, tries to set you up, man-to-man -man coverage. He just had Woodbury turned around. Woodbury had his hands full, just trying to catch up to Fitzky. Right here, he never really does. Fitzky making the diving catch, staying in bounds. How many championships have been won by people who couldn't run a 4-3-40? Four, four. That is 
cut down at about the line of scrimmage. Looking back at that bit of information about Baltimore never having scored in the playoff game in the third quarter, seems like it's an opportune time for the Birmingham Stallions to take advantage if their defense can hold. Well, they had him backed up and let him get off the hook just yeah. a minute ago. Yes, they did. Took a pretty good lick that time. It's big Doug Smith jumping on him. And he was running away from Doug Smith. Saw nothing to his left. Stopped, tried to go upfield. Doug Smith just stayed there. You see Doug Smith on the ground there. He'll get up. <laughs> Come back over to make the tackle. Comiskey couldn't get out there fast for Kelvin Bryant. Ball is now at the 36. And it's third down and about 12. 50 to go in the third quarter. They run out of time again. And he called the timeout. Oh, the clock to zero. One more. So first timeout, get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Ron Sadget going over to tell the official that there was no time on the 30-second clock, and he heard the official tell him to get away from me. Stars lead 21-0. Third down and close to 12 yards. With 11.44 to go in the third quarter, Baltimore's ball leading 21-0. And the Stallion defense burned on a looping pass to Fitzgerald a little while ago to get the Stars upfield. You've seen his pass is away. Collier is there, and he's got another first down for the Stars. He is, thank goodness. He, Chuck Fusina was awfully close to having thrown that pass beyond the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure that he did it. Yeah, neither am I. Let's watch the isolation. There's That's Willie Collier coming off the line of scrimmage. Fusina did a great job stepping away from pressure. He thought he was going to be sacked. You see him right there, jumping up in the air, throwing the ball. He Willie was Collier. close to the line of scrimmage. Very close, very close. You get away with it sometimes because everybody's watching the progress of the ball. Not everybody, but sometimes it's marginal. So now the Stars are camped on the stadium 48-yard line. And Chuck throw it again. Goes short with it, and Bryant loses the football, and Birmingham's got it. Ron Padgett comes out of there with the football. Ron Padgett coming up with the big play. We said that Birmingham needs to get back in this ball game in a hurry. Creates the first, comes up with the first turnover. Bill Rowe, I think, is going to hit him here, though. Right here. They fake this draw, try to come to him with the screen, and Bill Rowe knocks it loose. I don't know if that's not Rowe that comes up with the ball, too. Might have been. But anyway, <laughs> it is Birmingham's ball. First down at the 45. Make a break for themselves. Let's see if they can cash it in. Stout is throwing it to Joey Jones just as far as he can, and it is incomplete. Garcia Lane running right with him. Stride for stride. He also had help from the, from the middle of the field from number 27, Mike Lush. Chris Stout hung that ball out to the outside, hoping that Joy Jones could get there, but he was completely screened off from the ball. You see there, 27, preventing him from being, from him, preventing him from coming to the inside, and Garcia Lane having control of the outside. Birmingham's only run the ball game nine times so far. Of course, they got down early. The first quarter, 14-0. That tends to warp things a little. Joe Cripp, and Joe runs into Sam Mills and stops up around the 48. The fans are going here. They thought that the 
defensive line should have been called for being off sides on that play. But apparently by the non-call of the officials, they got back on their side in time. That was a three-yard pickup by Joe and his longest of the game. His previous carries had all been for two yards. Third down, we talked about capitalizing on mistakes. They need this to capitalize on the recovery of the fumble. Birmingham has not converted a third down yet. There's one to Jim Smith. First time today, and Smitty is down to about the 43. There were two people there, too, Lane and uh, Antonio Gibson, but he still was able to shake himself loose. Yeah, and Mike Lust and Dan Mills weren't far behind, Keith. It's been a... It's been a gang of red shirts around that ball every time it gets past the line of scrimmage. All afternoon. Very well-coached defensive unit. they play like one man. Vince Tobin is their defensive coordinator. Ball up to Baltimore, 43. First down for the Stallions, and Stout rolls to buy some time, but has to throw the ball away as number 67 was hammering after him. Pete Kugler, the big nose tackle. Pete Kugler came to this team. Then the Philadelphia Stars, he came right after having played with the San Francisco 49ers, being in the playoffs. That year they went to the Super Bowl also, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, they did. Then he came right out of the Super Bowl into a Philadelphia Stars uniform and back to the championship game. And after the championship game, they went to London to play a football game, but Pete Kruger said enough is enough. <laughs> Second and ten. Ball too high. Intended for Toller. Ken Toller. Chris Stout is taking a lot of punishment. Standing back there in that pocket trying to get the ball away. Sam Mills came in there, was blocked, went down to the ground, got back up, and then came back in to hit, get the pressure on Chris Stout. This is what that grass drill does for you, where you get the guys to go down on all fours right here, then get back up in a hurry and keep pursuing the ball. This is exactly what Sam Mills does to put the hit on Chris Stout. And it's third and ten. Joe Krebs, and Krebs is knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Blowing in is Buddy Moore, playing at nose tackle in relief of Pete Kugler. 260 pounder out of Eastern Kentucky, and it's fourth down back on the 45. Well, they had them both in there that time, Pete Kugler and Buddy Moore, and Buddy Moore just made a great play. Krebs had some blocking out in front of him, tried to use it and sprint to the outside, but again, we're seeing how fast some of these big people are. Moore is a designated pass rusher. He's, he can really find his way through the traffic. Parsons in the front, fourth of the day. Obviously, he's going to try to knock this one deep and kill it deep. Spins it to the corner. Caught, however, by Lane. And Garcia Lane brings it back out to the 23. So when it looked like Parsons might be able to knock the ball out of bounds inside the 10-yard line, Lane took the play away from him and brought it back to the 23. Well, it's been sort of an even scuffle here in the second half. But there's only one thing wrong with that for Birmingham. They're down by 21 points. Yeah, being even means you're not making up ground, and that's fine as far as Baltimore is concerned. Stars will go from the 23. And Alan Harmon bangs along and gets it out near the 27. Baltimore Moore met early in the season out on the West Coast. They played an overtime ball game an entire overtime period and wound up tied at 17. Short of the first down. 
We talk about Kelvin Bryant. Instinctive running ability. How smooth he is. That time he had a chance to see just how strong he also is. Number 22, David Dumars, had him around the knees, the ankles. And Spencer came over to make contact with him. Yet he still took Spencer and Dumars on and drove for another three yards on the play. Kelvin has run for 45 for passes for 102. Total production, 147. That's called impact. You see the throwing on third and three. Ducks away from the pressure. And big number 70 can't run him down. And now Chuck Hook slides out of bounds. And there the oh. Saturday flag. I don't... That is a... Ah, that's a real tough call, Keith. I don't see it as being a spear. Personal foul. Spearing on the defense. First down. I'm going to take another look at it. Lucina starts to run. He goes into his hook slide. A spear is when you take your helmet, you dive into the player using that head to cause more punishment. We'll see right here if this is a spear. Oh, oh that's boy. not a spear. That is not even close. That's not even close. What in the world is he looking at? I have no idea. I mean, this is, this this is head all didn't even shoulder. Go down at all. His head doesn't go down. He doesn't even exert any extra force in the blow. His body falls on top of him. That's ridiculous. Alan Harmon spun around and hangs in and picks up a couple of yards. The tempers are going to start to flare. Birmingham Stallions will be upset at the call. You see Herb Eatman, he'll pop over there in a minute. Because he will be, be a man who will come over to challenge anybody if they take on the running backs of this offensive unit. You know, I was thinking about the, the calls on the picks yesterday. Your basketball, the pick play, you got nothing, you, you got your drawers on, you're out there playing with no clothes on. And the pick play is the basic. Now I've seen little guards. And little here guards. are these great big macho guys out here in, in armor for crying out loud, and you can't run a pick play. It's the silliest rule in football. Inside, Harvin. And he's got the ball just about midfield. Now, a play like that in a penalty key may not have any effect on the overall outcome of the game because the Stars are very soundly taking it to the stallion. But you hate to see two teams that make it to a semifinal game, make it to the playoffs at all, and have those kind of calls take the game away from the players. It's a distraction. Third down and five. 420 to go. In the third quarter. You see the throw it. Chuck is hit as he delivers and the pass is overthrown. Pass is intended for Willie Collier. That's a good thing, too, because Dennis Whitbury, number 21, had fallen down on the play. Had you seen him been able to set and really take his time to get that ball away, we might have seen Willie Collier running down the field for a touchdown. Well, the Birmingham defense has come alive here in the third quarter and have done their job. The offense is yet to be productive. McFadden is the deep man for Sean Landetta's punt. Sean has kicked twice, 34-36. Kicks it away from McFadden, but he runs it down, and he'll come back some with it. Oh, he'll come back quite a bit with it. Almost a football, and Baltimore's up. They're going to call him down. They're going to call him down. They're calling him down? Yep, they're calling him down. Looks like he got Victor Harrison hurt on the play, too, downfield. Is that who it is down on the field? Tom Donovan. No, it's Tom Donovan. I guess he was I don't down. Know. Shoulder was down. It's close. Right now, they're tending to Tom Donovan, shaking up on the play downfield. I think he's going to challenge it, Keith. We'll be back to find out if the challenge is upheld. All right, we're back at Legion Field. Jim Mora has challenged. They had a look at the replay, and this one clearly shows it is a fumble, and it's Baltimore's ball. Thad McFadden is hit, and you'll see the ball pop loose before he hits the ground, before his knees or shoulders hit the ground. Clearly a fumble, 
the challenge upheld. He does not lose his timeout and indeed gains possession of the football. And Joe Happy, the center from Georgia, comes up with a recovery, and it is Baltimore ball at the 36 of Birmingham. It was clearly a fumble. From this side, you couldn't tell. From the other side, you could. That's the second turnover in the ball game for Birmingham. And you see the Baltimore Stars, how they forced turnovers in the last three ball games. Let's see if they can make it, turn it into points. Eufina fumbles the ball, and Chuck gets a bounce and gets it back. He had Riley and Harvin lined up behind him. He was trying to turn to give it to one of them. And never got away with a snap. Uh, you need a certain amount of luck in this game of football. There was Thad McFadden, does a good job on the punt return, moving it downfield. Then he fumbles it and loses the football. Here, a bad snap. Nobody from Birmingham around. The ball bounces right behind the offensive line of the Baltimore Stars. Chuck Fusina was able to recover his own fumble. And it's second down, 13. Okay. And he is finally taken down by Mickey Sutton. Mickey Sutton doing a good job. Bill Rowe was being blocked as he tried to extend his body out to tackle Harvin. Harvin got away from that one. Number 25, Mickey Sutton, out of Montana, comes over to make the play. Jim Smith made sure that 
if Chris Stout were going to complete this pass, he'd have to thread the needle, make it perfect. And that perfect pass would have only allowed Jim Smith to have to make a great catch. You see right there, he goes up in the air with one hand. Can't pull it down. Number 23 is Antonio Gibson, cornerback who is playing over the top of Jim Smith. A strong safety. Base! No, they show blitz. This is not their blitzing territory, normally. Now, they back off the blitz, and Stout misses. As they did get penetration, though, they got the pressure from Don Fielder, the defensive end, and Scott Warner, number 25, stepped up in the middle and blitz. Yep. It did blitz. I guess you call it a, you really wouldn't call it a blitz, Keith. They've got three down linemen coming in the rush. Very often, they will bring one of the linebackers for a four-man rush. That time, instead of bringing a linebacker, they just brought Scott Warner instead. Confuses the blocking scheme of the offensive line. No one picks you up. You can get in there. 46 seconds to go in the third quarter. Scott <coughs> has all day, but nobody to throw to. Now Smith works himself loose, but Jim is short of the first down. They've cut him down uh, about a yard short. He's having a little trouble getting all the appendages to work and get up. Garcia Lane and Antonio Gibson jumped on him. While he was laying down there, Keith, he saw his hand go up. He was just waving to his guys on the other side that he was okay. We'll take another look. Stout, lots of time. He's not found Smith yet. Smith giving him a sign. I'm open. But right here, Garcia Lane comes in, takes him low. Gibson tries to pop him high. He comes down on his rear end, and he's okay. Smith is now caught six for 74 yards. It's fourth down and one, and the quarter is over. So through six playoff games, the Baltimore Stars, all the Philadelphia Stars, have never scored a point. But they're in control at 21-0, and we'll be back for the final period after this message and a word from our local station. Quarter's over. <laughs> Yard and a half for the Birmingham Stallions. Cliff Stout throwing for it, gets it. As he throws to Joel Foles, and Foles goes down to about the 45 on the Baltimore side of the field. Jonathan Sutton brought him down. Now we get a little ruckus going on. Obviously the... Was that Sutton? Or was, I mean, was that Foles or was that uh, Mason? That was Foles. That was Foles. We have a word from the bench that Tom Donovan has a hip injury. James Caber, an ankle injury, so they're out for the remainder of the game for the Baltimore Stars. The ball is just short of the 45, and it's first down for Birmingham. They're down by 21, and he's scoring in a hurry. Stout throws underneath, throws behind Kohler. Kenny never really had a chance at it. I thought Smith was going to come open deep down the middle, but Cliff committed himself to the short man. Threw it pretty hard, too. We take a look at the third quarter stats. All things are fairly even here. It's just that the Baltimore Stars connected on the big plays. All three of their touchdowns were big plays and interception. A uh, long play, pass play for 30 yards and a touchdown, and the one to Kelvin Bryant for 70 yards and a touchdown. Pressure coming. Pass away. Fred Dex. Good play by Mike Lush, the free safety. Mike Lush came a long way to make the stop on that play. He's happy with himself. Joe Cribbs. Been nagged by injuries all during the season. Still managed to get 1,000 yards. And his years with the Buffalo Bills and two years down here, championships have eluded him. It's third down and about 13 for Birmingham. Smith can't hold on to it as he rolls over on the sidelines and it brings up fourth down. Relinquishing the ball now 
at the 13. And back to the 24. 13 minutes, 16 seconds. Play in the football game. 35-yard punt, 11-yard return. Indoors with food. <laughs> Pitch to Kelvin Bryant. Look at this. was furnished by the United States Football League. Well, I believe Kelvin Bryant can have the rest of the day off. Yeah, I think so. As soon as he gets his breath back, Jimmy Bryant will talk to him. And in playoff games of 1983 and 84, he has rushed the ball 117 times for a total of 615 yards and just adding more to it. Larry Douglas on the return, not much for him. Out to about the 22. Let's go to Tim. Well, it's been a tough day. You've been in and out, but boy, when you come in, you turn it on. Yeah, you know, I was a little tired. It was dizzy because it was kind of hot out here. Uh, and I had to come back in and, you know, the line did a good job and opened up the hole, and I just ran through there. Hey, B, have you really reached your peak in conditioning this year at all? Yeah, you know, uh, it's just real hot out here. And when it's hot like that, you know, you have to keep coming out. This game over? Well, you know, Birmingham, they got a, a good team, so we got to keep playing. Don't know if they can score 28 points though in 12 and a half minutes. Keith? Don't either. Nope. The other side of the field is marked by severe case of dejection. What happened, they will say. I'll tell you what happened. Home. And the guys will probably think about it on the way home. At least the guys on defense will. They'll say they got no help from the offense. They'll never say it openly or publicly. They should. That the offense has not been a chair in this game today. The ball has moved out to the 37-yard line as a result of a personal foul, and Cliff Stout throws to Darrell Mason, who gets the ball up to about the 45. First unseated player to do it, and the youngest player ever. Here's a pass to the sidelines, and a good catch. Fine reception by Ken Toller out of Mississippi. Ooh, that pass just came whistling by number 58, Greg Jameson. Ken Toller had his hands full, but came up with the pass. Birmingham going now with 11 minutes and 14 seconds in the final period to their hurry-up offense. They're going to measure this to see whether or not it's a first down. And the 
answer is no. Your crowd is 23,250. They don't have turnstiles here at Legion Field, so that is not an absolute count. And that but it's 5,000, roughly 4,500 more than they had last week for the quarterfinal game. And that was the count before Kelvin Bryant ran that last touchdown. Yep. A couple of folks have gone home already. Just, just short by four or five inches. Near the 38 of the start. Dumps it off, pass good to Jim Smith. And Smith will have the first down around the 26 yard line of Baltimore. And Antonio Gibson grabbed him by the sleeve and dragged him down. 27 is where they'll put it. Jimmy Smith, a strong receiver. Good footwork and stop, make the cut back inside. Tried to do it and just arm whip. Antonio Gibson to the side, but he found some cloth to hold on to. 10 to go in the game. Now throwing again, looks toward Toller, goes down the middle instead to Smith. And then he dives to the 20. Pick up the 7. Baltimore defensive pressure is forcing Cliff Stout and has been all day forcing him to a relatively early commitment. Yes, it has. He hasn't scanned the field. He's isolated one receiver and just gone to him. Into the corner of the end zone for Joey Jones, and he can't turn back and make the catch. Ball was thrown hard, and he had to turn all the way around. Couldn't come down. That's one of those tough catches to make, Keith. You have to go up in the air. Virtually impossible. You know, time it just right, judge the speed of the ball very quickly, go up in the air, get turned around, and make that catch at the right height. Joy Jones small, he gets up in the air very good, though. Now it is third down and four. Ready! He's audibleizing, looking for the blitz. <laughs> Except he didn't draw it very much. He jumped quickly over the left side of the center. George Jameson is there to wrestle with him, and then he comes up a yard short of the first down. Got to go here on fourth and one. Three points certainly won't help him. 925 in the ball. Game. That's closer to two yards. Ask to Joey Jones, and he cradles it in. Inside the 15 for the first down. I said three yards. I meant to say three points won't help him. Might as well go for the touchdown. Well, right now, Stallions, of course, as much as anything, uh, playing for dignity. <laughs> yep. Eight minutes and 50 seconds to go. <laughs> available. He's got Jones deep in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Joey just barely was able to keep the toes down. Kate, when you're not possessed with all the great physical talent, the size, the speed, you've got to make sure you do everything else right to compensate. So Joey Jones, being a small receiver, he's got good quickness, but he has to have excellent technique and bring all the other things to his game. Here, excellent body control. As pissed out, scrambles, looking for time to throw the ball. He wants six points and finds him. Puts it deep in the end zone. Now watch here. Both feet on the ground, inbounds. He stretches out. Freddie Belitnikoff would be so proud of you. Kick is up. And good by Miller. At eight minutes and 41 seconds to play in the ball game. Joey Jones always looking to improve himself and his ability. Right here, he stretches out. Both of these planted. He knows he's going to get hit. He's going to fall right down on the ground with the ball. Makes the catch. Oh, Quick stop. Has thrown for 284 yards and just got his first touch. Joey Jones plays a big role in Birmingham's first touchdown, making two tough catches.
Richard. First, this one for the first down. That was a third down situation they were involved in right there. It's a tough catch. Might be some judgment whether he caught it or not, but they gave it to him. And then he comes up with this spectacular catch. What a beauty. Oh, that's the kind that you dream about when your days are over. You reminisce about. Say, I did it when things were tough. Onside kick attempt possibly here. a good play by Larry McCoy, a linebacker out of Lamar for Baltimore. He had two stallions out there all by himself. And if he doesn't come up with it, Birmingham is a cinch to get it. And my golly, he made the play. McCoy looked very cool and confident over there. He knew the ball had to go 10 yards. Everybody else lined up to the left of Danny Miller. Two people to his right. He gets over there in time after he goes 10 yards. Recovers it before number 21, Dennis Woodbury, can make a play for it. And the Stars are camped at the Stallions 46, leading 28 to 7. 820 to play in the ball game, and Alan Harvard sweeps it right. And they're going to mark him down. He's just going to take a couple more just in case he tripped over one of his own men. But they put him down at the 42. Well, it's fortunate for the Baltimore Stars that the running game, especially that long run by Kelvin Bryant came around and worked well for them in the fourth period. They lost two receivers in the ball game. They lost Donovan and they lost Carver. They only had three wide receivers left in the ball game. Willie Collier, just recovering from a separated shoulder, had intended on playing except in third and long situation. <laughs> on second down and six, the play. timeout not to sustain the penalty so they're 
are tending to Irv Eatman right now. He may no longer be needed so much today, but next Sunday. Can't even read. Irv Eatman. See there. Tim Brandt is visited with him. We'll check in with Timmy after this play and find out what the problem is. Alan Harbin and Kelvin Bryant now back in the ball game, and Bryant's got it. And he's pinned down as he tries to lunge ahead on fourth down and one, and doesn't work. And so Birmingham will take over. And tempers are pretty short. Frustration is very long. Tim Brandt, what about Irv Eatman? Well, I just talked to Irv. He's never had ankle problems before, but he said somebody rolled right over his right ankle. So they're working on it now. It's twisted. He's more upset that it happened like it did because the play was over. He was behind it when the guy rolled over his ankle. Doesn't seem to be too bad. He doesn't think so anyway. It's, uh, he's in pain right now, but I don't think it's going to keep him out of practice or out of the game next week. Hey, Timmy? Yeah. Tell him to tape an aspirin to it. It'll be okay. <laughs> You better quit needling him. He's a lot bigger than you are. <laughs> That's what they used to tell me to do. <laughs> 39-yard line. Cliff Stout looking around, trying to find somebody. Now has to get rid of it. And throws underneath, and the pass is caught by Ken Toller. And all day long, when those passes have been caught underneath, there has been punishment ditched out. That time, it was 98 Mike Johnson. And working on his right ankle. This is one of those afternoons where the receivers from Birmingham go home, <coughs> lick their wounds, and tomorrow morning they're going to be a lot sore than they are right now. Jim Smith has the catch for the first down at about the 43 of Baltimore in front of Sam Mills. Jimmy Smith has caught a lot of passes this afternoon, but none of them have been for the touchdown. Baltimore defense slightly permissive now in the secondary area because they don't want to give up the big play. He's got 3.50 to play in the ball game, and Stout still throwing. Has to go underneath again. Then look downfield, he would have seen Jim Smith behind everybody, but because Stout getting so much pressure and time is running short, he had to find someone that was in his immediate vicinity. Jim Smith has caught 10 passes for 105 yards on the day team. Second down and about five. That pass one-handed by Jim Smith, and he will have a first down on the catch. Larry Douglas has come on the field now, replacing Ken Toller. Douglas, a speed burner. That's the way it looks for next Sunday night, 8 o'clock, Eastern Time. Giant Stadium, Meadowlands, East Rutherford, uh, Rutherford, New Jersey. Stout gets it away for Smith. Oh, my goodness. Is Jimmy going to get up from that one? Ooh-wee. No. George Jameson. I mean, that's brutal to take one like that. Uh, they have been taking these kind of hits all afternoon. And the linebackers and the secondary people. Anthony Carter, Gordon Banks, Derek Holloway. Are you watching? Classic tackle. Head on, full speed by Jameson. Headgear. Right, right on the chest. sternum. Right in the sternum. It's 28-7 and timeout for an injured Jim Smith. Jim Smith still down on the field. They're working on him. They have his shoulder pads off, you see there. Now he's being helped up. And he has no that helmet right in the sternum, boy. It just looks, it looks tough. It does. Jimmy with 10 catches, 100 in uh, 10 yards. And uh, every, virtually every catch he has made today, he has been pounded. Watch the play. He's taking shots similar to this all, you know, earlier in this ball game. Ball's coming in. You look, 58 Jamison. He has one thing in his mind, just to make the hit. And look at the way Jimmy's head snaps back. Well, the linebackers now, Jamison was back there. Johnson was back there. The linebackers have been playing in that really 
deep portion of what you would call your intermediate zone. But what about uh, your Carter, Messrs. Carter and Banks with that great speed? Well, the, the speed is going to help them out because I think they'll be able to stretch the secondary much farther down the field. And Charlie Sumner likes for his ball club to run north and south, go for the big play. Cliff Stout turns it up and ducks just past the marker and gets a first down before he goes out of bounds at 2.31 to play in the ball game. Little Joey Jones gets a little revenge for his pass-catching partner, Jimmy Smith, on that last play, Keith. As Cliff Stout was running towards the sideline, he squared up on, I couldn't see who the man was, the cornerback out there. Didn't give him the same kind of imposing shot that Jameson gave to Smitty, but nonetheless dropped him on his rear end. 231. We'll take a look at it. Right there. 47 Garcia Lane that he put the block on. That fumbles the football. And I think Birmingham has recovered it. And the man that knocked the ball loose was George Jameson. And Stout is shaken and surely weary. And Joe Cribbs is hobbling. Ruth will go in, replacing Cribbs. Stout now at 340 yards. 309 throwing and 31 on the ground. And we are at two minutes to play in this semifinal game. With Baltimore very much in control by a score of 28 to 7. Raleigh Dodge and his troops on the sidelines in their... Final two minutes of the 1985 USFL season. Now they're behind by 21 points. Smith is up now walking around. Gonna put his gear back on. Jim Smith might be going back into the ball game. That's tough. That's Jim Smith. 19 yard line. You ever gotta go to war and I get to pick the guys you have to stand next to me. Without <laughs> looking, Douglas breaks in the middle, and the pass is incomplete. Douglas with his speed, not able to break loose from Sutton and from Mike Lush. We're not going to show Heidi. Uh, we don't have that racked up to show that on our channels, do we, Keith? Say what? Heidi. So there's no chance of a great comeback here. Right. Uh, no. <laughs> I believe that's the sole property of the... Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've got our own. Stop. Down the middle. No, it's, it's too long. It's well, Larry Douglas. Yep, was it? Yeah, the ball looked like it was batted, knocked up in the air.
uh, they certainly were. Plus, their defensive line uh, did not give in to the pressure of the offensive blocking of the Memphis Showboats. They thought that they could run down the field on them, and uh, that was not the case. However, in the matchup between, Philadelphia, uh, between Baltimore and Oakland, I think a lot of the work and pressure is going to be on the defensive front and the scheme that they use in their pass rush to get to Bobby Apier. Because in order for him to throw down the field deep, he's going to have to have time. And that's something that they have not given anyone to, in this ball game this afternoon. They have not given Cliff Stout a lot of time to throw the passes he's wanted to throw. Hebert tends to take a deeper drop, too, because normally he's looking for the big play. So it'll be interesting. The Oakland Invaders and the Baltimore Stars in the USFL Championship game next Sunday night at 8 Eastern Time. Second down and goal. It goes to Coles, and Coles dives, and he is not there either. And now we've confirmed, Dave Bernson has, that Jim Smith's 10 catches are a USFL playoff record, and he's got his equipment back on after that wallop he took from Jameson. Smith set a record in the USFL with 20 touchdowns on the season. Cliff Stout trying to wedge it across on a quarterback sneak, and he can't put it in. And it's going to be fourth down and goal. Somebody's banging that drum right next to one of our microphones down there. Sure is. And Birmingham calls a time. They have one timeout remaining and only 58 seconds to play in the game. Birmingham Stadions will have one more pop at the goal line. Fourth down, the nose of the ball can't be more than six inches away, but it's been like that for the last two plays. We need someone who's going to go up in the air over this defensive line and their own offensive line as the defensive line will burrow down into the trenches. Give it a Cribs, and Joe's in there. Touchdown for Dignity, 55 seconds to play. The point will make it 28-14, but the ball game obviously belongs to Baltimore. Yep. One former Alabama player, one former Auburn player, both having played a lot of games here at Legion Field, score the touchdowns for the Birmingham Stallions, Joy Jones from Alabama and Joe Cribbs from Auburn. What is that highway that comes from Philadelphia down to Baltimore, 395? Kick mm. oh, is up and good by Miller. I'm not sure. The Pennsylvania Turnpike goes from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia. I keep 95. It's I-95. I want to call them the I-95 All-Stars. <laughs> All-Stars, because they have played like it today. And they certainly have. This is a team that was really having its troubles in the early going. The defense kept the team together. The defense won some ball games for them. They had trouble. Terrible time getting the offensive unit going this year. They have now won seven of their last eight football games, and they're going into the title game for a third successive time. Raleigh Dot's putting something together here on this kickoff. He is not planning on giving up until that clock shows zero seconds on it. Well, they've got to go on side. They score in a couple of plays. They've got what they wanted while ago in the onside kick when they were able to get only one ball against two stallions, but the Baltimore man McCoy came away with it. Woodbury was, was behind him when he made the recovery of that particular onside kick attempt. So they you know, got to pull it together. Ball just has not bounced for us. Not from the opening interception. Pop this one up in the air. And a fair catch is called by Mike Lutz. And you can do that on a kickoff. Mike Lush up there on that line. They put all the sure-handed people there this time, anticipating it. Receivers, people from the secondary, halfbacks all up there. Rodenberger was up there. Woodbury, Lush. 53 seconds to possess the football. Birmingham timeout situation now is uh, they have one. It's Carl Peterson, the general manager and the man who put this team together at the beginning. And 
Yusina takes the snap and just sits down. Now Birmingham will spend its final time out. Jim Smith now has taken the battle gear off. I think the good doctor came over and said, James, you've had enough abuse for the day. Yes. Let's not let courage get in the way of good common sense. Raleigh Dodge, like Jim Moore, was an assistant coach for the New England Patriots. Came over and was an assistant at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, he's done a heck of a job, Swanee. He's going to finish the season, what, 14-6, right? And he's done a great job. There's no doubt about what he has brought in terms of knowledge and organization and stability to this ball club. Unfortunately, he's just come up short of making it to the championship game. Again, now to kill the clock, and it's running at 47 seconds. Birmingham with no more timeouts remaining. Lifts out. A monument to dejection as of this moment because he wanted to win one. Never he has the rings from Pittsburgh, but felt that he had no great role in winning those rings. Here are numbers that spell victory. Fusina, 10 out of 16, 210 yards and two touchdowns. Kelvin Bryant, 116 yards on the ground, 101 yards in the air, a total of 217 yards. And Bryant scored two touchdowns. Jonathan Sutton picking off, pushed out the first pass of the afternoon, running it into the end zone for a touchdown. Got the defense fired up, inspired off from a good foot. And the defense played an outstanding ball game, and this one is history. Now to Tim Brandt as he talks with Jim Mora. Well, they said it couldn't be done. Three championships in a row, Jim, and you did it, and you faced all types of adversity getting here. Well, you got to give a lot of credit to this football team. Uh, they, had a, they had a lot of adversity, like it said, and they kept battling back all year. They had a lot of pressure situations, a lot of must-wins, and they just uh, they didn't quit. You know, and A lot of people didn't think we'd be here, but uh, we're going back, and that's the main thing. It's a great group of guys and a great coaching staff, and uh, I couldn't be more proud of them. Jim, is it a little bit more special than the first two because you were 5-6-1 at one point? on the ropes, then you're evicted from the stadium. I mean, it seems like everything that could go wrong did. It is. This, this, this I feel better about going this time than I have the first two because of the things that we've had to overcome. And nobody, nobody realizes what this team's had to overcome this year. And, and nobody will understand it, only the guys that were involved. But they've done a tremendous job of coming back. And uh, I, I couldn't be more proud of them, like I said. Congratulations. We'll see you in New Jersey. Thanks very much. Okay, Jim. All right, Keith. So your final score is 28-14. The Stars going to the title game for a third consecutive time. And one of the reasons right there, Chuck Fusina. He has been the quarterback from the very beginning, and he will be the quarterback next Sunday night when the Stars play the Oakland Invaders. I've never seen a better competitor.